We finally got ourselves some new content from the Spider-Verse franchise with the new Sony Pictures short, The Spider Within, a Spider-Verse story. Now though you may associate shorts with the likes of maybe Pixar Studios, Sony Pictures aren't actually strangers to the shorts format as they actually have all sorts of things from the likes of The Smurfs and Hotel Transylvania and even Open Season. So naturally with this thing being pretty convenient with my time zone just being 1pm for me, I got to see this thing live and yeah, it's a really nice little pocket of a story. It has no real attachment to the sequel of Across the Spider-Verse. The only real connection you have is the fact that it was released the same month as Beyond the Spider-Verse was originally set for release. Yeah, they were never going to make that deadline really. Instead taking place before the second movie as Miles presumably deals with his own inner demons. Although I guess this short could also take place after Beyond the Spider-Verse. The director did say they were only going to leave hints to the timeline. Maybe they spoiled the fact that Rio dies in the third movie or something since she's not here. And honestly, I could see a few people saying this is a little bit of an underwhelming short. The ending isn't really an ending. It's not got your classic big finale like some Marvel movie. And honestly, I think that's why I really enjoy this. Spider-Man as a superhero has always been emblematic of the smaller issues in life. They are the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. And considering nowadays every single superhero movie ends up being the world is going to end and the scale is always getting better. And even with Spider-Verse, it's a multi-dimensional issue. Having a story that's just small scale with a small conflict that's relatable as well and has a very nice call behind it is just so very nice to do with the Spider-Man IP. Across this short, we come to see that Miles is really struggling with his work-life balance and practically failing on every front. His grades are going down, he's being punched all the time, and his mask is even damaged on the eyeball, practically severing the lines between his two identities. Add on to the fact that he doesn't really want to communicate this with his father, probably for quite an understandable reason there. And what this short ends up becoming is a nice, short, psychedelic dream sequence of Miles Morales dealing with a literal paralysis demon, himself with just these horrid spidery eyes. And honestly, just the visual of that, as simple as it is as a super dark silhouette and only the eyes visible, is just great. You see him as a hint early on in the mirror and everything. Not to mention this whole thing is steeped in the theme of horror. Not only is Jefferson going through a horror movie marathon in the front room, but also the whole tone of this short is a little bit more on the horror side. And considering this is on the IP of Spider-Man with which a lot of children see, it's quite the interesting and bold choice. However, as the director Jarrell Dampier justifies it, my favorite genre is horror. I think it's the perfect envelope to give great messages out, especially to younger audiences. And I think it's something that we've kind of shielded away from for a long time. But I think if you take a character that kids really love and you put that character in a thrilling situation, I think they get a lot out of it. I say kids, but really I'm talking about all of us. I'm talking about the kid inside of us, you know what I mean? The ability to use something scary with something we love, I think that's the combination to landing the points and sticking the landing in the film. And yeah, alongside the fact that this short is just a nice little addition to some Spider-Verse content, in a whole new lens under a new genre and in a small scale conflict, it also has some genuine heroism as the backbone for it. As this whole short is a PSA for mental health. Literally to the side of the YouTube video from the Sony Pictures Entertainment YouTube channel, you have the donation option to the Kevin Love Fund. With the messaging generally being that everyone is going through something that we can't see. It's a mental health assistance program. Covering the likes of the global epidemic of depression, the fact that 50% of all mental health conditions start by 14 years of age, or the fact that the delays between mental health symptoms and treatment is on average 11 years. And having these points spoken through a genuine heroic character and showing that they too can be as relatable to the general public, even in something as small as saying I'm fine and then slamming the door immediately afterwards, is a genuine display of real superheroism shown in the real world too. I came into this short just looking for more content out of the Spider-Verse universe and content enough that it was small scale, very Spider-Man. But learning more about the backgrounds around the sides, how this is part of a genuine charitable push, and really I think this is a more than welcome replacement for the original date of Beyond the Spider-Verse. 
Instead of crunching down on animators, time is far better spent boosting up those in need. Thank you for making it halfway through this video. This is my quick little poke to tell you to subscribe down below since you're halfway in already. And let me know your thoughts on this short so far. I haven't been paying attention to the frame by frames for any Easter eggs and tiny details, so let me know what I missed. Or tell me what kind of other shorts and spin-offs you'd like to see if they were to expand the Spider-Verse story more. Anyway, I'll let you get back to the rest of the video, learning about the actual heart behind this short beyond just extra content. Similarly, this short was made possible by Sony Pictures Imageworks' Lens program, or leading and empowering new stories tellers program which adds to another side of boosting up as the aim of this program is to provide high potential candidates from underrepresented groups an opportunity to gain valuable leadership experience it's giving the voices to those that typically haven't had them prior in all senses this short is just great now, after mentioning the director, this was written by Kayla Amazan and produced by Michelle Ramo Kuyet and David Schulenberg. You can tell from the visuals that it's not entirely the full scale budget of maybe the second movie, but the aesthetic still works in the way that it is. I'm sure there will be people that can highlight a million mini Easter eggs that I didn't notice. I'm sure there's all sorts of frame by frame breakdowns to be spotted. I mostly only noticed the mirror and probably there's references to the comics. I mean, at least him being crushed by the pole is kind of like the Spider-Verse crushed under a building vibe. Other details we have from the director around the creation of the movie is that this was inspired by their real world experience with a sleep paralysis event. And then going on to say about the announcement of this movie at the Annecy Film Festival, it's a dream. I've never been to Annecy and I didn't think that my first trip would be to present something that I directed. So I'm very grateful a little nervous, but I'm excited. I just didn't think I would be here in life. You know what I mean? I didn't think I'd get this far. Which again as well, it's nice to just see a success story for someone relatively new. And more specifically on the sleep paralysis front, the director would go on to say that in a post-pandemic world, they've come to learn that they deal with anxiety, as well as insomnia and of course sleep paralysis issues. Even going on to admit that on the night of being offered a directing role by Sony, they had the biggest panic attack in their entire life and spent the night in the hospital. And clearly this can be reflected in the short, as Miles himself is going through a panic attack and dealing with his anxieties directly in front of him during the runtime of this short. Miles represents so many of us doing the best we can in our day-to-day -day lives. We don't often realize all that we've been through until our own body forces us to become aware of its experience. My intention is that the spider within can motivate deeper conversations amongst friends and family about their own mental health journeys, and I hope it feels like a love letter to those who adore Miles Morales. This lines up with the ending of the short in the end where Miles just goes out to communicate some of his anxieties to his father as the messaging of this short is that this is the best solution for those with mental health issues. It's communicating with others, getting your words out and potentially seeking help afterwards. And Kevin Love from the Kevin Love Fund even went out to say, I also previously didn't realize they were a professional basketball player. I'm British, it kind of goes over my head. But anyway, they said, my hope for the short film would be for everyone, especially young people, to understand that your feelings are valid and that you are not alone in this. You see it with Spider-Man in the short film where Miles has a trusted confidant. He is able to take a walk with his dad and express what he's going through. We can all learn from that, how important it is to reach out to someone, express your true emotions, speak your truth, and not hold everything inside. Others from the Lens team we know of are Clara Chan as VFX supervisor and Joe Darko as animation supervisor. Really, I would be all for all sorts of more projects like this in the future. As a fan of just the Spider-Verse world, I would love to see shorts. I love the Pixar shorts, so of course, more content is always great. But doing something like this that is so much more than just a simple filler episode in between movies is something truly heroic and probably like the last thing you would expect to see out of David Zaslav's Warner Brothers, you know? After the seeming behind the scenes crash of DreamWorks, the slow feigning of Pixar and Warner Brothers doing its thing, I think I'm really on board the most with Sony Pictures Animation right now. They seem to have practically everything on lockdown other than the crunching up to a movie. But this little pocket right here is some of the best of Spider-Man. It may not have the biggest visuals, the best frame by frame details or the grandiose of stories but it understands the essence and spirit of spider-verse more than possibly anything else they've made and hopefully it will only act to benefit all sorts of people going forwards whether on the diversity front from the lens program or for supporting anyone young or otherwise dealing with their own mental health battles hell yeah i'd love a lot more stuff like this in the future for now though i'm gonna win it off there 
My name's been Daz. Thank you for making it to the very end of this video. Do let me know your thoughts on this short in particular. Any Easter eggs and details you made have notice that went over my head. And what kind of things you'd like to see in the future. And I will see you in a little bit.